Hey, this is John Campbell from Lamb of God, and you're watching CMS TV. All right, there you are. It's Ozzy Osbourne. The disparity. Live. The disparity between the poison and the Ozzy is amazing. Yeah, it is. Wow. Considering the Ozzy was done, what, six years earlier, seven years earlier, something like that, maybe longer. Right. And the poison sounds so shitty compared to that Ozzy. <laughs> oh, my God. And not just the song choice, but the actual the production production is, yeah. you know, that Ozzy show I'd like to go to that poison show. I'd be walking out on that. Wow. You wouldn't go to the poison show to begin with. I'm going to be honest. I watched, so I don't like poison live. They're, I, I know you don't. they're, they're not good live, but I watched a, a few videos of poison on that stadium tour. Poison now better than poison then yeah. in their heyday. Well, uh, you know, obviously, uh, Brett Michaels has, uh, honed his craft as a front man. Yeah. And, uh, I, I don't know, maybe he's just sort of like became more of a musician than it was just all showmanship. Yeah. Well, and the other guys, cause they're well rested because they only get to play once every 10 years. True. You know, I mean, I guess they're not over, over tired anymore, but Wow, that was eesh. what you played there. I was just cringing my way through that. Yeah. Oof, that was tough. So, eh. all right, well, there we go. So I'll let you run this last one, man. This is all you. All right. Well, since we're talking about Ozzy. Yes. As you're well aware, Ozzy is uh, suffering from Parkinson's disease. Mm-hmm. And, uh, there's been a question as to whether Ozzy will ever play live again, which, right. the, which the, um, you know, the, uh, wisdom is that no, but, but he is listed on that. What is it called? Uh, what is power that? trip? Yeah. Power trip. Mm -hmm. He's listed on the bill that he will perform at power trip in October. Great. And the question is, is will he actually perform or is this sort of like a hype that Ozzy will perform? I, I have no idea. I'm thinking Phil Collins version. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne has been spotted looking frail as he took a walk without a cane Ooh. through leafy Los Angeles amid his battle with Parkinson's disease. The 74 year old walked alongside his, uh, caretaker who picked up flowers during their daytime stroll around the neighborhood. And she was making sure that the rocker was well. See, if we're all ready to this, that he's, he's walking with a caretaker. Yeah. He's got a caretaker. I mean, come on, retire Sharon, let this man retire. Right. I mean, for God's sakes, the, the demands, demands made him made his money. Yeah. He's how many millions of dollars do you think Ozzy has made between black Sabbath and his solo career? I think a thousand million. I think a billion. Yeah. He's, he's definitely, I mean, he's, he has been part of generating at least a billion dollars. He's been a, he's been a music He's been involved. I, I won't say music icon, but he's been, oh boy. He's been involved in the music business since the late sixties. Is that Steve Perry? Little, <laughs> looks a little bit like him. <laughs> Whew. He's 72. Yeah. My dad has just turned 94 and he looks younger than Ozzy. Well, your dad didn't, didn't do fuck it. Your dad didn't snort ants for God's sake. I, I, I understand that. But my point <laughs> is, is that uh, Ozzy is 72. Yeah. And you know. he's start he's starting to get that estrogen look in him. Yeah. He's got the, got the heavy cheeks and the heavy yeah. 
you know, the heavy facial yeah. thing going on there. And I don't want to, cr- I don't want to crush Ozzy for that. Look, he's 70 years old. He's been through fucking major hell. Yeah. I mean, so, this guy, this guy has done God knows how many drugs, alcohol, yeah. hard living lit life on the road, dealing mm-hmm. with Jaren, you know? Yeah. Jim said 774 or 74 million. That can't be right. He's made more than $74 million. I, 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 I have a hard time believing that that's all he's worth too. How's the Osborne net worth? I'm not on. asking what his net worth is. I'm asking what he's generated, but even his net worth better be more than $74 million. Net worth, according to this, two hundred and twenty million. That sounds amazingly low to me. Yeah, I'm. I'm just talking about what he's generated. Oh, in- he's seventy four years old. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Well, well according to uh, according to this article, he's seventy two. Yeah, he lies. Oh no, Ozzy Osbourne, seventy four. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm wrong. Uh, metalhead Ozzy took a sniff of the white and pink flower clusters together by his caretaker. I don't want to hear these stories about Ozzy. I mean, he's, he's like a, he's like an old man with a walker Jesus. going into the twilight of his career. And it's like totally over. Dude. He's literally the grandfather at the end of the Godfather playing with the kid. Yeah. And, and here's the whole thing is that when you and I were in our younger years, mm-hmm. Ozzy was the most feared person that our parents were afraid oh. of. Ozzy was the devil man. Oh yeah. I remember my mom who I've told many, many a story about being very cool. Yeah. Was an absolute no on me going to see Ozzy. Right. Because Ozzy was going to convert you to Satanism mm-hmm. somehow. I had to sneak. I had to tell them you know how I've talked about the the show at the Coliseum with Ozzy and um, Metallica. Right. I remember only telling my parents that it was a Metallica show <laughs> and they were less afraid of Metallica. Cause if I would have said it was Ozzy, it would right. have been an absolute no. It would have been an absolute no. You cannot go see Ozzy. Sure. But because I said it was Metallica, then I was allowed to go. And then I saw Ozzy and was like, wow, that was pretty fucking great. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I don't like hearing these stories about him sniffing flowers. What's next? Then he walked into a cupcake shop and got a, got a cupcake, you know, no sugar, sugar-free cupcake. Right. Jesus. Come on. <laughs> Let me play a clip from, uh, you know, this, this is something everyone is. Your- <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Lorraine, Lorraine Bracco. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, I'm still going out. <laughs> Can you imagine Dr. Melfi singing Crazy Train? Right. <laughs> oh, man. Is Oof. Crazy Train w- what brought you into my office today? Yeah. Do you bark at the moon? Right. <laughs> Well, well, here's here's something that everyone's familiar with, with uh, this lawyer uh, discussing on um, decline of Western civilization, the metal years part two about uh, the the mystique of Ozzy. Mm-hmm. The admitted lyrics, as you know, on the jacket were make your bed, rest your head. Don't you know what it's all about? Suicide is the only way out. Then I heard that there was a somewhat of a subliminal message. The first thing that we discovered is that there was a phenomenon known as hemisync. The experts told me that hemisync is a tone that results in two things. Uh, Exciting a person's understanding of what's being said and making them unable to resist what's said something where there was supposed to be music in fact it was words that said get the gun get the gun shoot 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 get the gun get the gun shoot 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 
I'll, I'll swear on oath that I never said, get the gun and shoot, shoot, shoot. I happened to go to a concert with Ozzy Osbourne. I wanted to see it myself. Did you? You saw 17,000 kids there. Not a smile in the whole group. Very somber. And it's not music. I mean, an old guy like me, you'd say, we well, couldn't understand. Well, I'm telling you, it's not music. It's <laughs> frantic, frantic noise. And I saw 17,000 kids that raised their hands like this, which is the sign of the devil, as you know. And they said, Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. <laughs> How many Ozzy shows have you been to in your life? Uh, Ten? At least a half a dozen. Did you ever see a mindless, first of all, at any metal show, did you ever see an unhappy, miserable crowd? No, people were just digging it. They were just enjoying it. And they yeah. were working out and having a good time. Yeah. I never saw a mindless crowd, even take Ozzy out of it. I never saw him going, Metallica, Metallica, yeah. or, or Ozzy, Ozzy, or any of them. It was fun. It well, was always well, fun. Well, what was that video? I can't remember who, which band it was. It was like Twisted Sister or something. And there was like this big screen. It was like Big Brother type thing. It's like, no more rock and roll. No <laughs> more rock and Remember that? Yeah. That, that music video. No mm -hmm. more rock and roll. Yeah. No more rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. I mean, these. it's amazing that this shit caught legs like it did. I guess it was the time and. You had fucking Tipper Gore that was close to the president, so it got a little more run. What was that the other guy that put out the, all those audio tapes about the evils of rock and roll? Uh, what was his name? I don't Bob, remember his Bob something. I don't remember his name. I know this though. I I went to several of those churchy things where they were. You know, my my. I think I've told this before on the show, but my neighbor behind us was this lady named Terry. And she was my mom's like best friend. Still, my mom and her are very good friends. They still have lunch once a month and stuff, you know, 50 years later. <clears throat> and, um, but Terry was a hardcore churchy, like very hardcore churchy. And every time they would do these, they, 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 they saw me going down the bad path. <laughs> That's what I said at the very beginning of the yeah. show. It's just like, you're on the road to hell. Yeah. And so they would take, they took me two different times, once with my mom and once without my mom to, um, to these presentations and they would pop up, you know, literally they might as well have just gone through my collection of records at the time. Cause they would just pop up my records and they would like, see, this is why this one was bad. Yeah. Blackie lawless. Oh man. no, dude. Way before that. that with the sister, man. Even that, even before that, I'm talking about. Black Hotel South. California. Oh yeah, because it, Anton Neve was in the window of yeah, and the oh. hair flowing down, and the, <laughs> the 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 sunset was like over some something that was bad. And here's the lyrics: you can you can never leave because it's hell, and it's a, you know you can check in anytime you like, but you could never leave. That's because yeah, they stab them with their steely knife. Yeah, but that's right. <laughs> the steely, yeah. It was a Steely Dan reference. Yeah, it was like, it, yeah. Well, but to them, it was Dan was a was a dildo man. Yeah. And I remember the Chicago was it Chicago that had a backwards track too, or was that just a goof? I think that was a goof. There, there was some other band that was very unlikely, but like the Eagles was very unlikely. The Eagles was there ever a more tame band? Well, but the thing is, is that the Hotel California really did depict the the yeah. the Church of Satan, and if you do look at the record cover, there is a face in the window in the upper upstairs, okay. and you know, according to lore, uh, it is the face of Anton Neve, who is yeah. the, uh, you know the founder of the Church of Satan. Okay, and it says uh, we haven't had that spirit here since 1969, which means that the Church of Satan was uh, was established in the year yeah. 1969, which means that they ousted the the spirit of Christ. Yeah, 
but, you know, but, but the Eagles were fucking with people. Yeah, well, I understand that. My point is, is that they were making they were making a reference mm-hmm. to all of these things in Hotel yeah. California because the Hotel California was a place of un uh, unbridled pleasure of sexual uh, right. deviance and alcohol and drugs and anything goes and you know Christ has no place in this you know this den of iniquity right <laughs> you know what I mean mm-hmm. and, and that's that's kind of what they were doing with a very soft rock uh, anthem yeah. as it were. Yeah, it just was ridiculous. And, and I just remember lured, it lured the unsuspecting listener in. Yeah, sure. To it accept did. this because it was just subversive messaging. That's right. And you're going to burn in hell for listening to this. Mm hmm. And then, then a few years later, remember when Motley Crue just fucking the, blew the, the lid off with Shout yeah, at the Devil? Shout at the Devil. <laughs> and they had, they had in their warning backwards messaging on this album. <laughs> <laughs> remember all that they they just like overdid it like totally fucking with people right of course i can remember when i brought home the cassette from that um from that album and i got it from my friend jamie that um he made me trade him a bunch of shit well, he had it down there devil worshiper i i don't even know your friend jamie but yeah I'm, and he was probably a devil worshiper well he just was he was trying to make me a devil worshiper so he traded me for like my Genesis and Michael Stanley for his Motley Crue tape. Right. And I remember bringing it home and my dad, my dad, it would have been one thing. If my mom would have seen it. My mom would have been like, ah, oh, whatever. Who gives a fuck. Right. Or my mom would have looked at it. Truthfully, my mom would have looked at it. She probably would have said, throw away the fucking papers, you know, the, the cassette, the fold, the, the gatefold or whatever that's called with cassettes. Sure. She would have probably told told me to throw that away and just stuff like a piece of paper in there and write Motley Crue on it. Yeah, hide it from your dad. That's what she would have done. She would have had me hide it from my dad. But I remember my dad got it first. He's like, what the fuck is this? You're you're being subjected to the world (laughs) ideology, man. He did not want to see all that devil horse shit on there. And he wasn't even religious. He just was like, what the fuck are you listening to? And I was like, ah, yeah, but then, you know, and it was one of those things that, I mean, that was what, 90, 83. So I was like 13, maybe 13 yeah. years old. Yeah. So at 13, how do you tell your dad when you put the tape on and it immediately goes to this fucking demonic reading right into shout at the devil, right. you know, how do you fucking explain that to your dad that it's not devil music? Right. There's no, there's no coming back from it. You know, and, and then all the other songs on it, Red Hot, Bastard, Knock Em Dead Kid. You know, it's like, holy shit, this was, a, that was a tough sell for my dad. That was one that I kept hidden in the closet for a, for a while. <laughs> like, I, I, if I remember right, I don't remember exactly, but um, I think I told my dad I threw it away, but I just, like, kept it hidden right in a box in my closet, and then every once in a while... I would like stick it on the inside pocket of a jacket and go right out the door. So he wouldn't see that. That's what I was listening to. You know, it was like, it was like a whole thing to listen to it. Well, I remember, (laughs) you know, you know, back in the, I think it was late Mm seventies. Um, I'm going to have to look this up. I'm going to look it up real quick. Okay. It was a TV series. Okay. Uh, it, because of the word. It was called the bastard, the bastard. Yeah. I don't remember that. Let me see if I can. Did they rename it to something else? No, no. Here it is. The bastard TV series. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, the bastard where to watch the stream, the bastard, uh, the bat 1978. Wow. So. Uh, the bastard created by John Wilder with Andrew Stevens, Tom Bosley, Kim mm-hmm. Carell. Wow. Buddy Epstein. Buddy Epstein. Was he, was he Jethro or? <laughs> no, he was. He no, was, he's uh, Jed. He, Jed Clampett. Jed Clampett. Yeah. Uh, this was out in 1978, but and regardless of that, yeah. uh, it was a TV series that came out on TV, right? Mm-hmm. 
So my sisters, I, I wasn't so much into that because I was only 14 years old or something. Sure. I, I could give a shit. Right. But uh, I remember it came out in the summer of 78. Okay. And my sisters who were older than me, they, for whatever reason, they wanted to watch this. And my parents, uh, they often after dinner, they would go outside and they would kind of like work in the garden or hang out on their lawn chairs or whatever. Okay, you're right. Surely. And so my sisters who were doing the housework, uh, cleaning up the dishes, clearing the table, whatever from dinner, Mm -hmm. they would turn on uh, the TV and they would watch the bastard. And I remember my mom walking into the house while they were watching this thing and she just totally fucking flipped out <laughs> now how did she know the name was it like a did it have like a song like you're watching no, the bastard no, she, she was aware that it was coming on tv for whatever reason i okay i don't remember but we she took the tv away for two weeks okay <laughs> because my sisters were watching the bastard. So you couldn't watch TV either because no, of your sisters? I couldn't watch it even either because, <laughs> because of them. That's funny. <laughs> so but so because of because of the content and the name of the TV show, yeah. the bastard. The bastard. It, I do not remember this show. It was just so foreboding yeah. that uh, we all had to suffer the consequences <laughs> because of this. Because your sisters were watching that evil show. The it, was, it was an evil show. It was just <laughs> terrible. It's funny. I and, and again, I just had to look this up because I, I can't even remember the timeline of this. Yeah. But all I remember is that none of us could watch TV because, <laughs> because of this. Because your sisters just wouldn't watch Mork and Mindy that night. They had to go for the bastard. <laughs> I love the reference. Mork and Mindy. Yeah, that was go. exactly the same time frame. Of course. Hey, I know my useless <laughs> trivia. <laughs> I know, but but here here's the uh, lineup of the people on this, and and I think you're going to laugh when you hear this. All right, <laughs> Cop Rock was it better than Cop Rock? Anything was better than Cop Rock. <laughs> All right, here here we go. Uh, Tom Bosley, Mister Cunningham, right? Kim Cattrall, uh, she's in Sex in the City, and sure. What was that movie? She Porky's mannequin. Well, she was also in Porky's. Yeah, she was in Porky's. She was the moaner in Porky's. Right. Buddy Ebsen, who was in uh, Beverly Hillbillies. Right. <laughs> he was Mr. Clampett. Get this. Lauren Green. Lauren from- Green Bonanza. <laughs> Bonanza. <laughs> um, let me see. Who else? Pa- uh, Patricia Neal. I don't know who she is. She was in uh, Walton's. Okay. She was in that, but she was like a actress way before the Waltons. Right. Uh, let's see who else is. Uh, oh, William Shatner. William Shatner, the Shat Man. Yeah, he was in this. Good Lord. There's a lot of names in this thing. Early Star Trek. Uh, let me see who else was in this. Uh, I don't see anybody else who's kind of recognizable, but, uh, regardless of that, that, that was That's just, a lot of recognizable people. Right yeah, I know. And it was a TV series, right? And boy, my sisters caught hell for that. <laughs> there was hell to pay. I tell you, I'll bet there was, but, uh, yeah, the TV got taken away for couple of weeks because they were watching the <laughs> bastard because they dared to watch the bastard right because you know bastard was a bad term oh yeah you couldn't say that word back in those no. days dude you couldn't say anything i i remember i i don't know if i've ever told this or not but uh, one of the worst ass beatings i ever got from my dad was um because i said the word damn I just decided one day I was going to say, damn, and I'm out riding my bike and, you know, hanging out with all my friends. And I was like, 
this damn bike and this damn this and this, da-, you know, just damn, 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 damn. Right. And apparently one of the mothers of one of the kids fucking called my dad and I got home and my dad was like, what have you been out there saying in the streets? And I was like, damn. And he just fucking walloped me. <laughs> Wham. I mean, he fucking, my dad did. I, I was not a kid that got hit very often. Truthfully, I, I would get spanked more by my mom than my dad. And it was like, uh, she had this little pink hairbrush that she used to spank. And it was, uh, it was almost comical because the thing wasn't as big as a fucking water bottle. Right. And she would try to spank me with this hard, hard plastic thing that didn't hurt for shit. Sure. But my dad, I remember that day when, when, when I said, damn, and he fucking gave me a smack, <laughs> open hand smack on on like the back of my like i turned so i caught it on the like the back of my shoulder instead of like i guess on the back of my neck or wherever he was aiming for i don't know what he's aiming for maybe my head or something you know like you know you remember in the old days your dad to smack you in the back of the head dude i i got smacked in the back of my head yeah in the middle of church fuck yeah that was just part of it because we were sitting all in a row in a pew in church and right. you know maybe the pastor said something that we mm-hmm. thought was funny or yeah one of my siblings said something that was kind of off and you just kind of try to hold your laughter and you know you're trying not to laugh and your dad reaches around your mom yeah and just smacks you in the head like give you a hard shot yeah right to your fucking like, head right in the fuck up yeah and that would be it too if if he could speak that i mean that was the equivalent of saying straighten the fuck up was just taking a fucking smack to the back of your head that's exactly what that meant <laughs> and and i i just remember when my dad whacked me I, I mean i turned or something and he caught me on my shoulder and i remember having his fucking handprint and a bruise on my shoulder and uh, and it was like a whole deal it was like a big ordeal and I was all woo, hoo, 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 <laughs> crying like a baby, but you know, he was like, you don't say those goddamn words. And he's, and he, you know, that was his thing. <laughs> you don't say God those goddamn, goddamn words. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that. Uh, my, one of my older sisters, yeah, some guy was interested in her. Okay. And, um, she was discussing this with my mom and right. my mom's friends. Yeah. And she was just like, well, this guy likes me and he calls me and he wants to take me out and yada, yada, yada. And sure. You know, she just didn't think that uh, she was worthy of this guy. Okay. Uh, because he came from more of a, more or less an affluent family. Okay. And she was just like, yeah, I don't get it. Why does he like me? And you know, whatever. And this just comes from just conversation with people from school and whatever. And I just said, he just wants a piece. <laughs> I said that out loud. Oh. And my mom and my mom's friend was just absolutely horrified. Oh, I'll bet. I'll because bet. I said he just wants a piece. Yeah. Well, that's, and that's honestly probably what he did want. <laughs> Holy shit. Did, did the, did the hell rain down on me? (laughs) How dare you? I will never forget that as long as I live. It's hilarious because I was just being honest. Mm -hmm. Well, that was your mistake. You know what? I will never not be honest ever again. That was your mistake. How dare you be honest? (laughs) But I'll never forget it. I, I, I can visualize that situation to this day. Right. <laughs> like it, like it happened yesterday. It I'll was, bet. Uh, it was just like, holy shit. It yeah. was like, what, what is it about those words that just made these people react so violently? <laughs> well, it, it, you know, what makes it even more weird now, now that we're old. Yeah. Is what you can say now. I mean, nothing that we say now you couldn't say hell remember no. everybody was like oh what the he double hockey sticks yeah. is that all about double hockey sticks double hockey sticks and that went i would say into the mid 80s or so oh yeah easily 
if not longer. I mean, I, I started swearing like a, like a maniac the minute I left home. I remember because, I mean, swearing in my mom's house was a big deal. Oh, yeah, of course. That was the same way with me. You, no, you don't, you don't use profane no. language. I remember one time my mom said, said something like, to me, like, um, we, we got in a huge fight. It was at my grandma Evie's house. And I remember it. I remember it cause it shook me to the core and I cried like a bitch again. But, um, this was, I was probably 15 years old or whatever. And my mom took me outside in the rain cause I was acting up at my grandma Evie's house. And she took me outside and she was yelling at me and she's like, you're just turning out to be a worthless piece of shit. And she said that, and she she said said that. it was like the first the shit. It was the first time I'd ever heard her swear ever. <laughs> and I just remember going, because, <laughs> cause I was so hurt that my mom fucking said that I was a worthless piece of shit. <laughs> wow. She was so fucking mad at me though. And I don't remember what I did, but I had done something. I think I had made fun of my grandfather that, that was like fucking had a stroke and couldn't talk and couldn't walk and shit. Wow. And I had, I had said something really fucked up and she took me outside to fucking scold me. <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't remember. I don't remember what it was, but it was something. And she's like, you're turning out to be a worthless piece of shit. I remember just standing there crying in the rain. Wow. Ugh. Like, like the white snake song. I was yeah. crying in the rain. <laughs> Did someone leave your cake out in the rain as well? Yeah, pretty much. A little MacArthur Park. That's right. Look at Jerry C. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We've lived traumatic lives, Chris. Yeah. Maybe that's why these kids need safe spaces now because they got to hear all these dirty words. Yeah, it's just terrible. Well, it, it amazes me when I see like parents and stuff and their 15 year olds are like, why are we doing this shit? And I'm always like, man, if I would have said that to my dad, I would have caught a knuckle fucking sandwich. Yeah, of course, you could, you'll get a crack up of the back yeah. side of your head. It's just like, bam. Yeah. Even as an adult, I couldn't do that. I mean, I, I, I don't think I swore in front of my dad, t- like openly, just to where I just didn't care anymore till I was probably out of the army. Well, I, I'll tell you, I've never sworn in front of my dad ever really never never in my life not once do you think he'd care oh yeah does he hear that has he ever heard you swear on this show i don't know that he's listened to this show he's aware of the show but i don't think he's ever listened yeah yeah because he probably wouldn't like this at all then no no this would not this would not go fly. This would not go for well at all. Wendell, why are you talking about personal things with that filthy mouthed guy? Yeah. Well, you know my sister's reaction to you. Yeah. <laughs> I believe that too. I believe that as well. I can see that. That was always kind of one of those things that we all tried was what, you know, we'll spell it. I don't give an S H I T what you say. Right. What did you just spell? Nothing, dad. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Now I'd, I'd imagine your dad would hate this. Well, yeah, no. I mean, I, I certainly understand. I mean, my, my, my dad didn't like that. I swore, you know, the, his whole, his whole life before he passed away, he did not like that. I was swearing at the end. Right. But you know, it just was what it was. It's weird to me now. Like, because my mom is now getting into that age where like the veneer of you, of trying to be perfect is sort of edge, you know, it's, it's fading on the edges, so to speak. And every once in a while now I hear my mom drop like an F bomb or a, or say shit or whatever. And I'm, and I'm always taken, I'm always taken aback by that stuff. Yeah. You know, if I hear my mom, I'll be on the phone with my mom. And, and she's not a Trump guy or Trump girl. And she, at, at one point she said something to me about, about during the election, she's like, oh, I pray to God that fucking Trump does. And I was like, whoa, what did you just say? And she's like, oh, I didn't mean to say that. 
know? Like she, she still has it in her head that she's not supposed to say that. Right. But she will drop an occasional F bomb and it always catches me off guard. It's weird. Well, I agree. I sent you over a, uh, you know, I sent you over an article. There's a bunch of photos on there. It's like, holy shit. This is Aussie. Really? Oh my goodness. (laughs) Come on. This, This is the Prince of darkness. This is the guy that our parents fair. Beard is this darkness dark. or retardedness? Right. Jesus, what is this? This picture looks like this. This looks like a kid looking for pennies to eat. Right. This is the guy that our parents feared and said he's going to take you to hell with him. Yeah. Holy shit! This guy is the devil. He is like evil incarnate. Look at at this guy. What the fuck? That is whoever published that should be, should be shot. You know, how can you publish that photo of Ozzy? It's the paparazzi. That is a bad. And of course it's probably, you see, he's stepping on a crack of, of like a cracked sidewalk or something. So he's probably stumbling slightly because he stepped and he's old. But he's probably stumbling slightly, and that's the photo they got of him. You sons of bitches. <laughs> How could you do that to Oz? He looks worse than than Biden. Eh? He looks terrible. Eh? Eh? I can barely walk. Look at me. I can barely feel. Uh, that's horrible. Oh, Jesus. Come on. <laughs> Why are they doing this to Ozzy? Why? Why? Here, Ozzy, sniff these flowers. Yeah. Take a little smell. Eh. It's wonderful. Eh. Oh, Jesus. Come on. Do you have to do that to Ozzy? Of course, we're just as bad. We're doing it too. So. <laughs> oh. I'm not enjoying seeing these photos at all. No, I don't like seeing Ozzy leaning up against a bush to smell a flower. This is a print of darkness. Dear God. Darkness. (laughs) Shun the non-walker. Shun. (laughs) Shun the darkness. Shun the darkness. Walk to the light. Oh, dear Christ. This caretaker needs you. She needs to take a little pick in her own health. She needs to take a longer walk. <laughs> Says the fat guy. <laughs> I'm less concerned about Ozzy and more about his character. I'm more concerned about Ozzy at this point. He's walking like half his body doesn't work. Jeez, oh. Jeez, oh. These are, these are tough to see. Shun, shun the non-believer. Shun the heavy walker, Ozzy, shun. <laughs> Holy shit. What the, what in the, God, God damn it. <laughs> this just ain't supposed to happen. No. It's the end of an era. Oh, boy. And it needs to end. I hate to say it, but Jesus. I mean, these are, these are brutal to see. This is not, this is not fun. This no. is very, very unfun to see. It's, it's disturbing to go, oh, holy shit. This is what my whole life was about. Yeah. How many times did I go see this fucking guy perform? And this is the guy that you're going to see at power trip. <laughs> Supposedly. Who are you, Bob Bob Dylan? How how clear is he going to sing? This guy can't even fucking walk a straight line. With his fucking flower tote and fatty. I mean, what the fuck? This is going to be brutal. Is she going to be on stage with him to make sure he doesn't fall? 
Jesus. Look at this. <laughs> I love the Oz man, but for God's sakes, dude. And more, I'm more pissed off at the fucking photographer than I am at the fucking... Uh, hey, good on him. He's He's been through a fuck ton of problems and he's trying. So yeah, exactly. Michael J. Osborne. Exactly right. <laughs> fucking coming off like Michael J. Fox. Ugh. <laughs> Jesus. Him <laughs> and Phil Collins could do a duet. <laughs> Who would win in a race between Oz and Michael J. Fa Fox? Jesus. That's not very nice. He was sh 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 shaking <laughs> his, fing his fingers. Who would win? Parkinson's would win. <laughs> Damn. These guys are more heartless than us. I know. These I'm actually are, feeling bad for Ozzy here. These are our heroes. I mean, you show that picture. I mean, yeah, this is one of my heroes from back in the day. You know, it's like, oh, good Lord. I got to turn that off. I, I can't look at Ozzy like that anymore. That's just tragic. All right. Are we done? It's, that just that bummed me out. Unfortunately, it's the end of an era. Oh my God. It's over. Not, not, not the end. It's, it's, we're looking back at the last of it. I think the last of it was that last black Sabbath tour. Yeah. And that was 10 years ago. Wasn't it already? Yeah. I mean, that album came out in what? 13. I think. I think so. I think you're correct. Yeah. Well, I hope he's better and I hope he kicks ass at power trip, man. If he performs. Oh, he'll perform. Do you think? Oh yeah. Whitfield's training now for the gig. Whitfield. Allegedly. Allegedly. You don't know that story? No. The, 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 the rumor now Bandian told me this was that Whitfield crane was, was the Aussie behind the script, behind the, 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 the curtain for years. Okay. For years, wit was the voice of Ozzy. I wasn't aware of any of this. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's now Bandian told me that that, that went on for years. I don't know that it's true or not true, but I've, I have no reason not to believe now Bandian. Well, yeah, the guy's always been straight. <laughs> oh, yeah. shit, I had no idea. Yeah, that's what he told me was that the voice of Ozzy on the last several tours was Whit Crane. Really? Yeah. That's what, again, I got nothing to base it on except one guy that said he saw it happen a few times. So take that for whatever that's worth. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to have to take your word for it. Yeah. So, uh, all right. I have no idea. I have no proof. I'm just going to go with what, uh, our good friend, Bob now bandy and told you. Yep. And, uh, go with that Then go and be done with it. There it is. I'm going to believe it. All when, right. I, when I see this guy fucking limping across the fucking sidewalk. Yeah. I believe it. <laughs> I had no idea. I can say, I don't believe it. I do believe it. All right. All right, well, we're going to get out of here. All right. We're going to be back next Saturday. Our good friend Sammy Lee from the band Red Rain will be part of the show. We're going to debut a brand new Red Rain song, which has been six years in the making. Yeah. And uh, we hope to see all of you here. Yeah, hope so. All right. Well, we're going to get out of here. And since you uh, kind of mentioned it's almost over. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of close the show with almost over from docking. All right. Works for me. All right. Well, we're going to get out of here. We'll be back next Saturday night. So until next Saturday, this is Neely along with my good friend, Chris Egan. And we're gone. Bye kids. <laughs>